Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. So we are checking out the Bike Tricks Stunner LT. Now I've got two of them here, actually. Uh, they're in two different sizes. Uh, the blue one is a 24 that I've been riding, and we also have the 20 inch. Uh, anyways, these are some really fun bikes and we've been using them out here on the trails. Uh, so this is kind of like a long dike road that kind of goes all the way around uh, Pitt Lake here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, by the way, uh, that's where I am checking out these bikes because Bike Tricks is a Canadian company. So if you're in Canada, you know, check them out. Uh, you know, Canada is a small place. You can just drive anywhere you want. <laughs> I'm just joking. But yeah, we're going to be riding it up and down here. We've already kind of come to this point, but when I do the filming portion to show you the bikes, we'll kind of be going up and down this road here. It's got some gravel and some grass, and it's actually pretty... Uh, Pretty good test for these bikes and uh, they've done pretty good so far. So let me go ahead and show you what they're all about. Okay, so one important distinction that I can make right off the bat is that these bikes are the same in, <laughs> in every way. Really the only difference is the frame size. Everything else translates over, including the, the gears, the brakes, the battery, everything else is the same. So uh, one thing to note if you wanted to check out the 20 inch version for yourself or the 24, there's also a 26 inch version that I don't have with me, uh, but you can check it out on the Bike Trick site. Uh, it's all the same, so no surprises there. But yeah, let's go ahead and check out some of the uh, components front to back, and I'll kind of tell you about some of the things that stand out. So we have some pretty strong 13 gauge spokes up in the front of the bike here. Uh, that goes onto the main hub, which is held on by a quick release, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, quick release helps you to get the wheel on and off if you wanted to change a flat tire, uh, which would be uh, no fun in a bike like this because the tires are nice and big. This is a 24 inch uh, size for height, but also a four inch wide in diameter. So this is a nice fat tire that makes it really comfy to ride on rougher roads. Also gives you a fair amount of traction. So if there's a bike tire that you could say would do more or do anything, then it would certainly be the fat tire size. They're pretty popular uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, on the road, they're not nearly as efficient, but they still work. They still go down the road just fine. Uh, so up here, you also have the RST guide, which is the fat tire fork. So this fork is wider to accommodate the width of the four inch wheel. And this is a spring loaded shock that you have with adjustments up here and a lockout on the other side. Uh, or is that flip-flopped? Sorry, <laughs> this adjusts the preload, this adjusts the lockout. Uh, also up on the front, you have some nice metal fenders. Um, one nice little feature that really gets me excited. I like metal fenders. You don't have to goof with them so much once they're set. They don't rub or get in the way uh, once you have them squared away. I like that a lot. They do away a little bit more, but clearly on a bike like this, weight is not really the first consideration. Uh, so down here, you have uh, 100 millimeter rotors. Uh, for the brakes. That's uh, for the diameter. That's a good set of brakes to have on a bike like this with hydraulic disc. So this is the disc and the pistons are in here that are set by the reservoir here that holds in the hydraulic fluid, some mineral oil. So it's kind of like the brakes on your car, the way that they actuate with some hydraulic fluid. So that gives you a lot of good stopping power, which is very nice to have on a bike like this that is heavier, possibly going higher speeds. Uh, but also when you get into off-road conditions such as these, there might be some surprises come out and you want to make sure the brakes work uh, pretty well. Uh, also up front, while we're talking about it, you have the windowed indicator for eight speeds going into the set of Shimano gears in the back. Uh, this is a Shimano A-Sera uh, derailleur, and we'll kind of go over that when we get to the back of the bike. Uh, so you have some ergonomic grips that kind of have a little flare out, but they're not so um, padded and and circular the way that you see some comfort grips on cruiser bikes. This one has a little bit more angle to it, kind of a little bit more aggressive. It doesn't change the functionality. It just doesn't quite look so uh, pedestrian, we'll say. <laughs> uh, you do have a little bit of a sweep to the handlebars that kind of come back to you a little bit. Uh, so that keeps uh, some of the cruiser-esque features uh, kind of close at hand. Uh, on the other side of the handlebars, this is the trigger throttle that will engage the rear motor. I'll kind of show that, do a little dance here. Uh, when you press that trigger down, that's what gets the motor going. If you want to expressly engage the motor. Also has a cadence-based pedal assist. Uh, so with the control pad on the left side, you can press the up or down arrows and that will, as you see, engage the different levels of pedal assist. 
as you pedal the bike, then the motor will kick in. And depending on how high you have the number, that will control the duration of how much assistance it gives per pedal stroke, as well as the top speed. Uh, so if you are pedaling along uh, pretty fast, then it'll engage pretty fast if you have it in pedal assist number five. Uh, also on the display, it has a pretty big readout here. It is a monochrome, just one color uh, LED display, or sorry, LCD display here. But you do have a lot of energy bars. So if you like to be specific on how much power you have left in the battery, this is nice because it gives you all 10 bars. I've seen other displays that only show you a couple of bars or a couple of lights, uh, but this one has a pretty good readout there. Uh, your main speed right dead center in the middle, something you'll be reading, and the odometer display. And when you press the M button, that will cycle through the different uh, metrics. So it'll go through your current speed, a timer, odometer, trip set, and some other functions uh, like that. Uh, also over here you have the adjustable stem, which is pretty cool because the adjustable stem you don't even need a tool to use. When you pull down on this little thumb pad and pull up, then that will loosen the stem and then you can adjust it on several axes. You can rotate the handlebars in place and you can also, uh, it's kind of tough to do with one hand holding a camera, <laughs> but you can also change the angle of the stem itself. So those two things, both the angle and also the rotation, give you a lot of customizability, especially if you want to share this bike with another person, or if it's a bike that you give out test rides for all the neighbors who are very curious about how they all work, uh, then this is a pretty handy thing to have. You can change the handlebars and with the quick release on the seat post here you can change both of those and then boom ready to ride so that's a pretty cool feature if you have a bike that a lot of people are going to be trying out uh, but also it's nice just to be able to get the bike into say the back of a truck if you just want to lower the profile of the whole bike in general kind of pull that thing down angle the stem all the way and boom suddenly your bike has lost well not lost <laughs> suddenly your bike has changed to where it's you know five six ten inches lower which is pretty nice depending on how you sit so other cool features on the bike, you do have a nice step-through frame, which is good for a cruiser model. Uh, the nice wide tires give you a fair amount of comfort no matter what terrain that you're on. And having that cruiser feel makes it a really good bike to get in and out of really quickly and also pretty comfortably. The riding position is pretty relaxed too. You have the seat that kind of goes lower. I'm gonna drop that, there we go. It's not straight, but that's okay. The seat itself is lower than the stem up here, uh, so that gives you a much more comfortable place to sit, more natural the way that you would in a car, per se. The seat is not a slacker either. Uh, this seat kind of has a faux leather covering on it, pretty wide. It also has some springs on the bottom that help out quite a bit when you're sitting on it. Helps to kind of absorb a little bit of the bite that you get when bouncing around. Uh, in the middle of the bike, you have the 48 volt, 12 amp hour battery that locks into position in the middle of the down tube. Uh, this is pretty cool. I like this battery case. Uh, it's quite popular. You know, it has this handle that you can pull it off. After you turn the key, you can physically remove the battery and pull that right out. Uh, this is kind of becoming a standard in some of the electric bikes that we see. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good system. Uh, down here, you also have the air-cooled controller. Uh, so this is kind of the brains of the operation with the electric bike. And it's mounted here on the back of the seat post tube. Now this is exposed, so some people might say that it doesn't look good, that it's not really cleaned up, because sometimes you see controllers that are integrated literally inside of the frame or perhaps inside of the motor. But in this one, it is out. And that is okay if you want it to be air-cooled. Some controllers actually need a fair amount of cooling, depending on how much power they output. And this one, you can definitely say, is not going to overheat because of its positioning. Now the motor, while we're talking about the electric system, uh, is this bad boy right here. So this is a 750 watt nominal uh, Bafang hub drive motor. Now it puts out 750 watts, which the motor itself can literally do all day long. I don't know if you want to sit on a bike that long or if the battery will keep going for 24 hours, but it'll do 750 watts, but it also peaks at 1000 watt of output. And so with that kind of hub uh, driving this bike, you can definitely get into some pretty sticky situations. And so Bike Tricks actually kind of put some thought into that by adding this derailleur guard here, which you can see is already a tiny bit scratched, which is good because you don't want it to actually bump the derailleur. So if you're going through some pretty thick terrain or some kind of narrow passageways, it's actually nice to have this thing on there that kind of protect the derailleur itself and the derailleur hanger from getting bashed around. Uh, we actually came from that trail over there past the guard tower, but in that trail it gets pretty narrow. You know, the the 
the branches are coming at you from both sides and so it was actually really nice to have that feature uh, while we're going through uh, so yeah one last thing to talk about on the electric system is right here you have the magnet disc for the pedal assist system now, this is a 12 magnet disc uh, that is counting the rotations of the crank as as the bike is moving and it doles out the pedal assist as a result You kind of sneak in there towards the bottom. You can see right here. This is the little counter and You can kind of count the little magnets right there that it's passing over on either end So that's how the pedal assist system works. It's a tried and true system. It's been around for a while On the bicycle side again, you also have uh, this is a pretty good set of 11 to 11 to 32 tooth Shimano uh, eight-speed uh, cassette back here. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, integration with the whopping 52 tooth <laughs> front chain ring up on the front, so you can get a lot of tension uh, on these. So that's a that's a really nice thing. Uh, you've got some through axles, or sorry, not through axles. You have some axle nuts here because the cable for the motor actually runs straight into the middle uh, through that axle. And on the other side, you just have a regular bolt. So one thing to mention. Uh, while we're on it is that if you're taking this wheel on and off that has the motor be sure you get the nuts in the correct position and orientation because uh, if you don't then it can be kind of tough to mount it back into place so that's one thing to consider if you're looking at electric bikes and you're looking at hub drive bikes they're a bit tougher to get flat tires changed on them uh, but one thing that they did do uh, is put some stronger spokes in the back these are a 12 gauge spoke which is thicker than the 13 gauge spoke that you have up on the front of the bike and as well you have the adjustable kickstand that's mounted in the far rear and that's pretty good uh, when you want to spin the the cranks like so you're never getting in the way you're never going to have to worry about kicking the kickstand when you're putting the bike in and out of your garage one last thing to mention uh, aside from the matching fender in the back is that this is the rear rack i don't want to call it a pannier rack because it's not going to fit some pannier bags some of them will work if they have a larger claw that can get over this this metal but this is actually some pretty thick uh tubing so this is pretty strong it is bolted and color matched to the frame uh, which is really nice so if you have a set of bags that flop over it then that's great or if you have a set that has a little bit wider of a hook this can handle you know a fair amount of weight i don't know if i'd put anything too precious on there but it's a pretty good rack if you have an, a usable pannier set for that uh, so yeah anything else to cover other than the beautiful color on this bike that has a smaller wheel size uh, the smaller wheel size is definitely a lot of fun when you're doing lots of cornering if you want a smaller wheel size they are fun for a full-size adult like myself this is actually the bike that i rode through some of that thick portion that i showed you earlier it's pretty fun and maneuverable but a lot of folks get it so that they can share a bike with their kid or perhaps just a smaller adult i am a little bit tall uh, so that's you know one thing to remember but yeah either one of these is a lot of fun along with the 26 inch that i don't have in front of me but yeah let's go ahead and ride and i'll show you what they look like uh but yeah this <laughs> this is a lot of fun uh so on the stunner lt it differs from the other bikes uh in a few ways uh, principally the frame is a little bit different also this one the lt it has a hub motor and hub motors are a lot of fun in many cases they got a lot of guts to them they really really kind of kick you in the pants <laughs> when they get moving man so gorgeous out here this is really a great trail for this kind of bike uh, as you can see um, the trail is obviously fit for cars uh, to travel at a fairly low speed uh, but yeah it's got the relaxed uh, seating position for this bike as well as some pretty good uh, components for comfort uh, the fat tires the shocks up on the front as well as a wide seat with the springs in the rear so this is a really comfy bike uh, that you can do a trail like this and be pretty uh pretty satisfied with it uh, aside from the fact that i'm holding a camera and trying to balance it's a little precarious in that aspect but it makes for a really easy going ride because you don't have to concentrate so much on on controlling the bike with the weight of your shoulders and kind of pressing down you can kind of steer a little bit with your fingers i guess if you wanted to uh, almost like a bus uh, so it's a pretty uh pretty unique experience it, it provides a lot of a lot of uh you know stop and smell the roses kind of riding so yeah let me show you a little bit about how it works and yeah let's go <laughs>
Okay guys, thanks for joining me on checking out the Bike Tricks Stunner LT. It's actually a pretty fun bike. If you want to check this out with, along with other Bike Tricks bikes, you can go to electricbikereview.com where you can see the full write-up on this as well as other bikes in their lineup. Also, you can check out the forums from Electric Bike Review if you want to participate there and kind of chime in and ask some questions if you'd like. I hang out there every now and again. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and ride safe.